lock the door soon. We don't want people to see the mess. It's in shambles. Looks like a tornado hit this place. Hey, welcome to The Closing Beat, a special recorded edition as we are under construction here. We're moving, if you didn't hear. Uh, we are soon to be moving locations, so all of that's got to go into a truck in pieces, then into the new place, then back together, and maybe a few additions and improvements there as well. If you want to see, actually, uh, that's what it looks like. That thing off to the right that just kind of looks like a deck uh, with nothing on it, that used to be the speakeasy, man. We're basically... Uh, Having to tear everything down, but so far so good, and we've got a lot of time. So hoping to move some stuff later this week, start making some trips maybe, and uh, knock this out because we don't we don't like being down, right? We'll get back to work. Um, also, if you were in our uh, Wine and Wealth class last week, if you're one of our clients, of course that's there. It's a rebalancing data-based type class. And if you're a research member, it's actually free. Uh, so that's included in everything. If you want to join the research site, uh, it's $13 a month. Helps us get a rolling cart or something so we can move some of this stuff. Uh, but that class is available for you there as well. Specifically, when to rebalance your accounts and not based on my opinion or just what I believe, but actually based on data. So I hope you'll check that out there. Um, also, Cody's inviting people little by little uh, to join us here. So if you're on our wait list to join us here at Jazz, do appreciate that. Uh, rolling over 401ks, Roth IRAs, starting investment accounts. Of course, that's what we do here. And that's why we're talking about the market every day because we're one of the only advisors that actually pays attention. And I know that because I just met a bunch of them and they have no idea. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's take a look at the stock market. So this rally here continues. Uh, I'm going to start with the Russell because the Russell's leading the way yet again. It takes the top spot uh, for the second day in a row in terms of performance. He had a rough week last week, but this week you've almost recovered almost all, not all, I mean more than half of it, right? So you got a broad-based rally. If you're looking through the Russell 2000, it is not going to be uh, focused on value stocks or growth stocks. Really, it's just a broad rally, right? So index-based sort of broad buying there, uh, looking good there. It is now just a fraction of a percent away from getting back to third place year to date. Remember, the Russell was in first place year to date, chopped around a little, S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow all caught up. It was in last place, but that pullback proved to be viable there, and uh, so that's what you got going on there as far as the Russell goes. Uh, we'll take a look at the Dow here. The Dow's in third place year to date, and a couple stocks you want to pay attention to is going to be financial stocks. They've really seen a nice recovery here. Goldman Sachs up 2.5% on the day. Well, you got Boeing as well after that sort of waterfall drop, Boeing recovering there. But in the Dow, other financials I point out would be JP Morgan and American Express. Right. So American Express up 2% on the day, almost back to new highs. Those stand out. You also had Verizon with earnings and Coke with earnings as far as Dow stocks. Got a new breakout there on Coke. We'll cover those just a little bit. And there's a handful of stocks in the Dow that are on deck as far as uh, reporting earnings. So it's going to be a busy week next week and a really busy week after that. If you're playing Guess the Dow, I hope you're close. I hope you're in first place there. But Cody's going to tell us where you stand. Uh, yeah, first off, uh, whoever uh, made that leaderboard, there's a little little error on there. So uh, that's that's their fault. Uh, if you want to play Guess the Dow, you can go to jazzwealth.com forward slash Guess the Dow. This week we got Andre, Amy, Jerry, Charlie, and Tate in the top five. And actually, Andre and Amy, husband and wife situation going on there or uh, other sister. But uh, either way, we got a family uh, one, two there. So that's kind of cool. Nice. Their, their only issue, by the way, their only issue is the fact that... Uh, Mr. Jerry Lou seems to be able to tell the future, and he's in third, so that's... Yeah, Jerry Lou sneaking great. up behind there, man. He's always on there. He's oh, always on there. Man, okay, so, yeah, that's yeah. true. You can you can do, um, you know, husband, wife, as long as it's a different person, right? We can't stop you there. You're welcome to play. It's a $100 gift card if you win. If you're one of our clients, you can take the gift card if you'd like, or you can take a $100 credit to your account. And the catch there is, well, the, the, the benefit there is... Um, if you've already maxed out your Roth IRA, we can put an extra hundred bucks in there. Totally legal, and that is allowed. Uh, so, I wish you well. Play along. Let's see what happens there. Um, well, I'll just cover, like, lastly here, the NASDAQ, as far as the major indices go. Uh, it was actually down to start the day, thanks to Netflix's gap lower. That's going to be earnings related, and I'll cover the details here in just a minute. Semiconductors are what pulled the NASDAQ back for the day into positive and obviously with a good day. Uh, so semiconductors, I'm using the SMH here, very strong day. If you're looking through them, um, there's actually a lot. A lot of them had good days today. Texas Instruments, kind of an interesting technical pattern there, breaking out from recent highs, not all-time highs. Uh, but that one had a strong day. Applied Materials makes the semiconductor actual machines there. Nice reversal. It's officially, well, almost officially recovered all of its um, 
uh, losses from that downturn there. So semiconductors were the best industry inside the NASDAQ here today. So I just thought that was rather interesting. As far as the S&P goes, sector-wise, let's take a look here. You got a hand, I mean, a lot of stuff looked good. REITs uh, held up at the highs there, basically. Housing numbers from yesterday confirmed that uh, builders, home builders, are not taking any risk here. They just run the football, so to speak. That's, that's what the home builders are doing. I snuck it in. Right? Thank you, thank you. And no, that was, that was what they did there. They're just kind of going along with what they have. Essentially, they have homes that they're in the process of building or someone signed a contract or closed on or the initial closing and so they're just going to go ahead and build those they're not going to go look for new neighborhoods they're not buying out anybody they're not doing all this stuff they have agreed to basically just not take any risk until we see where interest rates go and can you blame them there right can you blame them also uh they're waiting for costs to come down as well labor costs material costs which they are coming down at least material costs there also, if you're looking inside there, uh, you could use the XHB inside of the real estate sector. Uh, home builders as a whole trading at eight times forward earnings, which is basically a low for them. So even with the price where it's standing at now, earnings, you see um, overall earnings growing 20%, fastest pace since 2013, yet we're only trading at eight times forward earnings. So a lot of people would say there may be some discounts to be had there if you like that industry and want to dig around. Consumer discretionary today was um, largely just what caught my attention. A lot of our reopening stocks, um, just looking through our portfolios, Marriott, uh, it's one of the stocks that we own. We have 2.3-ish percent in our aggressive stock fund. Looking like it's going to break through this downtrend, huh? You had a washout failure here, right? So an immediate snap back into the top of this range. Tomorrow's going to be really important for this one here to see if that could be a breakout. Um, you've got Carnival. Also, uh, we happen to own this one here. Carnival was our best uh, position today with a 10% gain, aside from Occidental Petroleum's warrants. So Occidental Petroleum's up 7%. We happen to have been awarded some warrants on Occidental Petroleum, and those were the best performers. But as far as the stock go, uh, Carnival, our best performer, just a quick snapback uh, there overall. Um, Marriott, by the way, has uh, outperformed every other uh, hotelier in the category besides Hilton. So we had a good pick there. Over the last year, it's off by 2%. Hilton's beat just by 2%. Had we owned that one, we'd have had an extra uh, 2%. Reason I chose Marriott initially, just to give you a heads up there, reason I chose Marriott was um, they have 1.4 million, 1.5 million rooms and 10% of those now, just about 10%, I think, or right on the border there, that 10% are luxury rooms. Have you ever seen lately, like what hotel rooms are booked? It's the luxury rooms, where people are, you know, normal hotels as well. But the fact that they've got 10% in these high end, more expensive rooms, uh, that's bode, you know, should bode well for their earnings overall there. So um, that's what kind of noticed there as far as consumer discretionary goes. Uh, booking holdings, anything reopening today obviously is, is doing well. It's about 2% of position for us in our aggressive stock fund. Uh, down 6% in the last two days, up 6% in the last two days. Now, oh, now be careful here with something like a bookings because uh, if you look at like their price to sales forwards, 156 times higher than historical for itself, than his, its historical average. Um, so kind of interesting there. And I might just point out real quick because I remember from uh, Marriott, uh, 144 times price to sales compared to itself looking back over its lifetime there. So just careful on some of these. Uh, Trip Advisors, the same sort of thing, but this one's starting to uh, kind of pull back nicely. Um, 168%, right, if you're looking at that. So, eh, you know, these are, these are I would argue Trip Advisors looking a little bit better, but uh, careful on some of the valuations here if you're a fundamental type uh, investor. Communication services, really steady all day long. You can see it there as far as the daily bar is concerned. It stayed basically at highs, held in there, nice little rally. One of the only... Uh, well, one of only four of the sectors you see on the right-hand side of your screen with year-to-date gains of 20% or more. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Just looking around there, some of the stocks that we own there, Match.com, it's about 3% for us in our large cap fund, uh, got an upgrade today. So, I mean, I would say it's undervalued, and I forget if it was Stiefel, no, Truist. Truist put their price target to 190 uh, So it gives you an idea. They think it's undervalued as well. They think it's going at $190, so, well... Good luck to you. I certainly hope it does now. Uh, a couple other sectors real quick. Energy is going to be your best performer here today. Price of oil recovering very quickly. Um, you had some uh, supply issues out there with the numbers that came out today. Demand still a concern, but the supply is obviously dwindling down little by little. We're back over $70 a barrel if you, uh, if you care. 
paying for that uh, gas. Uh, and financials, right? So, uh, financials were the second best uh, performer here today. If you're looking inside of financials, your most overbought stocks at the moment, T. Rowe Price is one of those, and uh, Moody's, I think, was the other one. MCO, yeah. So those are the two most overbought stocks in the category. Most oversold is going to be Bank of America still. And I think it was Schwab. There you go. Schwab is the second mo uh, most oversold. I'm sorry, Franklin Templeton was the most oversold. Schwab is third. It gives you an idea of some places to take a look at there. Going over to earnings here real quick, because there's a lot. We're going to have to just give you highlights of all these as the next two weeks go by, because we, there's a lot. There's a lot to go over. Netflix, you likely saw Netflix already. Very sloppy report, in my opinion. Uh, they have 209 million uh, subscribers. They added 1.5 million in the second quarter, uh, but that was short of expectations. They were down, actually, 400,000 subscribers. Uh, in the U.S. and Canada. So a lot of the ads came over in Asia there. Um, and then guidance going forward for the total subscribers, they were going to uh, hopefully gain uh, below expectations as well. And uh, a lot of excitement around the gaming sort of thing that they're taking on. They said, look, this is very, very early stages here. Don't get too excited. So that's Netflix largely there. Uh, Chipotle, incredible day for Chipotle. Uh, beats on earnings by 14%. Margins come in about 1% better than expected. Uh, labor costs are always a focus. So if you, let me pull it up. If you're ever looking at labor costs or, or looking at Chipotle around earnings, always interested in labor costs. It is a large portion of, naturally as a restaurant, large portion of their revenue. Um, and that came in at 24.5% of total revenues versus 28% last year, 282 to be exact. So they say they're easily finding workers. Social media is a big one for them finding uh, workers as well, but they're also paying more. Uh, so they made a commitment to go ahead and pay more and that apparently is working out for them. Digital sales now 48.5% of their total sales. The CEO said that'll probably go down, but as long as it uh, doesn't hurt our total sales, we're okay with that. People are coming in now and wanting to sit down and have a little something to eat. I don't blame them. Good food there, man. Interactive Brokers, normally one I don't talk about, but Interactive Brokers, the uh, it's a brokerage firm, if you're not familiar with them. Um, they beat easily thanks to active trading. Active trading, hmm, they say it's a stock picker's market right now and people are actively trading out there and that helped them beat. Also, people are willing to use more margin than ever, which means their net in, uh, interest net interest income uh, was higher than expected because you're borrowing on margin. They're making a few bucks on that. And uh, so interactive brokers, about a half percent gain on the day. Why do I bring it up? Because Robinhood is a brokerage firm not so much with the margin. Actually, our video that we posted earlier today talks about how they make their money and in what percentage of each category do they make their money. Uh, but I thought maybe that's a little, you know, a, a hint into what Robinhood may look like when they start reporting. So I thought I'd share that with you. Um, you've got United Airlines basically sparked an entire rally for the airlines here today. That's going to be uh, them coming out with earnings. I believe they still posted a loss. Yeah, all right. So the loss, not as bad as expected there. And they said they they see the light at the end of the tunnel would be the sort of, um, let me give you the just the snapshot of what's going on there. Uh, Verizon beat by seven cents, raised their guidance going forward there. We happen to own it, so we're looking for that to get moving. We own it in our dividend fund, so we're not really looking for serious growth here. But Coke is also one that happens to be a bit of a dividend yielder plus uh, um well, some growth here, so not uh, complaining about that one. Uh, they said they see no impact from the Delta variant around the world uh, so far, as far as, not as far as health goes, as far as obviously their products go. And um, people that are buying more products away from their home is picking up more. And, you know, maybe that's a given. Maybe you kind of could, could have guessed that, but that's where they stand. And ASML, uh, semiconductor stock, reporting earnings there. They beat by three cents, raised their guidance going forward. Uh, they said, er, uh, so earnings were... A uh, bit of a miss, right? Bit of a miss on earnings, but they said demand is high across all segments. Those are their exact words that I'm reading off the screen there. Um, so in other words, sales were a little bit lower. If you look at their earnings, sales were a little bit lower, but their margins were higher, right? So that's a net positive, at least the way it played out uh, for them. And naturally, you'd expect to hear about more demand in the semiconductor space after everything we talked about earlier in the class here. Uh, all right, let's go over to stocks in the news. Smile Direct Club. Smile Direct Club has won the latest battle against the Georgia Board of Dentistry there. Kind of a ridiculous uh, lawsuit in my opinion. But Smile Direct Club is the company. Basically, they send you the stuff. You put it in your mouth. You send the new ones. They put new ones in your mouth. Uh, mail order brace, uh, braces, but they're also in Walmart. They've got a whole bunch of other stuff coming out. So maybe the tide changing for Smile Direct Club. We'll see. Right? That was a tough IPO for them. Uh, Target almost hitting new highs there. Um, 
the first of the new locations where Ulta is going to be inside of Target as well, and they're going to kind of work together. I believe that has started. If not, then we're just days away. They announced the uh, first locations for that, and I believe they also launched them in the same thing. So good for Target. Um, no, I'm going to say Uber, not Urban. Uh, so Uber is still higher by 2.5% today. They're going to start a delivery pilot uh, with Costco. So if you order stuff from Costco and you're not there, an Uber driver comes, picks them up, you can have your stuff within hours, and they say possibly even minutes. They're going to do that in 25 stores. The problem at the moment is Uber and Lyft drivers are currently on strike in a lot of different cities. and Those happen to be some of them. So how does that go? Uh, that was one of those days where Uber was just kind of hoping, could we just be in the news for this Costco thing? No, no, no. Driver's on strike, man. Uh, Prudential is uh, has officially sold about 4,500 retirement accounts uh, to empower. Well, it was just an astronomical number. Uh, 3.55 billion. Hey, empower. We're right here, man. Wherever empower, you guys are out there. I'll, I'll make videos. I'll hang out. I'll keep doing everything I'm doing. But if you're dishing out the cash, you know what I mean. I don't think anybody fault me for that one. Uh, but that's impressive. That's that is an incredible valuation there for those accounts. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And Moderna is officially taking its place in the S&P 500 today, replacing Alexion Pharmaceuticals. So there you go. A little bit of an adjustment there. Now tomorrow, um, boy, we have some earnings. You got American Airlines in the morning, Biogen in the morning, Dr. Horton, uh, Danaher, Dow Chemical. Uh, Southwest Airlines will report in the evening there. Then you got Newmont, AT&T, Union Pacific, Capital One, Intel, Snapchat, and Twitter, or Snap Inc., right? So, and that's not everybody. That's just me looking, right? So it, it's going to be a busy one. We will be back uh, live tomorrow uh, to go over this and, of course, take all your questions. But I uh, hope you learned something today. Hope you got to take a look at the markets. And um, what was the other thing? Yeah, that's about it. I appreciate you hanging out with us here today, and uh, we'll get this posted to you and see you tomorrow live. Enjoy.